Orange County, California, well known for its wealth, entertainment, and active lifestyle. And its first city, Anaheim, well known for being the home of the Angels, who play in the beautiful Big A, Anaheim Stadium. And right across the freeway, the magnificent Honda Center, where the Ducks play. And of course, Disneyland, internationally known as the happiest place on earth. Not as well known about Anaheim and its neighboring Orange County cities is the extreme poverty experienced by many who live here. Poverty that invites gang violence, drug use, human trafficking, and other related cycles of desperate living conditions. The sad reality is that children growing up in these circumstances are first victims and then perpetuators of this cycle. Without clear alternative healthy choices, adolescents in these at-risk communities are likely to adopt similar life patterns. I've had students that um, had to live in a park setting because they didn't have a place to go each night um, or they've lived in shelters. You cannot learn unless you are at peace within yourself, unless you, you have a supportive environment. You can't give a kid some hard math to learn when the kid doesn't have lunch, when the kid doesn't have a friend to confide with, when the kid is scared. We do have a gang problem in Anaheim, we acknowledge that. We have about 35 street gangs in Anaheim comprised of about 2,500 gang members. We can spend all day doing our best to bond with them and to teach them, uh, but, but really additive services that come in and really teach the kid what it's like to, to be excited, to be enthusiastic, to explore things we couldn't possibly afford to do. You know, to have fun with music or baseball or to, you know, learn arts and crafts and, and have maybe a camp experience, to be a kid. You know, those are things, uh, lots of our kids are latchkey and they don't have that opportunity to, to have that exploration. The goal of all of the programming is to get mentors to work with children and to get the mentors to expose those children to what they could become. One of the things I, I really like about uh, Higher Ground, what you see is that these younger people can mentor kids that are even younger than them. And so now you have elementary kids who can be supported by high school kids. And they actually sit there and play with the kids. That was the main thing right there. They play with the children. I couldn't believe that. The other programs, they kind of tell you, okay, do this and that, and let them go out on their own, and they start arguing, and you know, then it gets really bad. But here, they were, they're playing with them. This gave him the opportunity to be part of a group to fit in, to just be himself and just open up and let people in. It was really great. My son is a totally different child. And maybe 15 years from now, that child looks back and says, I remember when such and such told me that or did that for me. And those are the kind of um, game or life-changing things that, that go on here, I think, at, at higher ground. And uh, uh, without that, I think it's just another after-school uh, daycare program that goes on all over the country. I think it's got that extra component of you are, you are filling that need with that, with that child or that group of kids that uh, maybe nobody else in the whole wide world has ever filled for them. Currently, we have hundreds of kids involved in sports, educational, and recreational activities. So to keep up with this incredible growth, we've purchased modulars and placed them on the south side of the park and what we're doing with them is really special. Our first one is our clubhouse, furnished by the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. The second is our creative learning center. Here we engage our kids with art, music, and several creative activities. The third is our family resource center, where we offer education and support to the parents in this community. The fourth is our food distribution center, including our kitchen and administrative offices. And coming this spring are digital arts and video studios. You can either treat the symptoms or you can stimulate the city to heal itself. And uh, I believe uh, that has something to do with kindness. And so watching Higher Ground, it really is watching kindness in action. It's contagious. They need outlets. They need productive outlets. They need sports. They need activities. They need to just expand their horizons away from just the streets that they live on. So I really love the, the programs about prevention. There are lots of juvenile diversion programs around. Nobody that I know is doing such holistic work. Everything from feeding youth to 
having after school activities, playing ball is really important for making it a place kids want to be. We want the kids to know that they have a choice, you know, that, that, that I, I don't have to live like this so I can be healthier, you know, that I can be whoever I choose to be uh, if I work hard at it. I, I don't need everybody to come to chapel, but what I like to see is to have these kids have an opportunity to go to college. If you said what's higher ground, well that depends on what the need is and tomorrow there may be something different that this community needs and I think uh, the beauty of higher ground is it, it, it seeks the next level and will continue to fill that need um, based on what's presented uh, in, in our community and what the kids and, and families are asking for.